Hey guys, Dennis here. Welcome to another episode of The Bizarre and Spooky. Today, I want to start things off with a fresh new story on artificial intelligence. So our beloved Google has developed an AI that can focus on a single voice in a crowd. It does this by actively identifying and suppressing background noise using both visual and audio cues. This is something that us humans have evolved to do quite precisely. For example, you might be talking to your friend in the middle of a bustling city. You hear cars honking, there's construction going on, and yet you are somehow able to filter through the noises and understand what your friend is saying. Try doing that with, say, Google Assistant, and you'll find that it'll struggle quite a bit. So, in my mind, this is a quite a big deal seeing as how they program disability into an AI. On the positive spectrum of its usage, you can imagine improvements in voice recognition devices and more importantly, this technology could do wonders for cochlear implants for the hearing impaired. But then on the negative spectrum of its usage, as the technology matures, at some point in the near future, you'll have to say goodbye to privacy and personal boundary that was, for the most part, guaranteed by human limitations. All anyone has to do is to wear such technology disguised as cochlear implant, then eavesdrop on the conversation of their choice. I personally don't like where this is going, but I do wonder if that's because I'm too old-fashioned? I grew up into adulthood as the world was shifting from analog to digital. Therefore, I have perspectives of both worlds and I prefer the analog in many ways. What about you guys? Let me know in the comment section what you think about these technological innovations that are fast changing our world. But hey, let's move the topic to something a little more cheerful. Hold on, let me get to the article in question. Ah, there you go. So guys, Antarctica has lost about 3 trillion metric tons of ice since 1992. It's the end of the world. In all seriousness though, uh, before 2012, the continent shed ice at a rate of 76 billion tons each year on average. But from 2012 to 2017, the rate has actually increased to 219 billion tons annually. When you combine all the ice that have been shed, the water resulting from that has raised the global sea level by an average of 7.6 millimeters. I believe that's about 0.3 inches. From my limited understanding, when sea levels rise rapidly, as they have been in the last five years, coastal areas can be devastated even from small increase. Sea water reaching further inland can cause erosion, it can contaminate aquifer, arable soils, and those things combined can lead to decimation of certain groups of animals and plants. They say that Antarctica currently contains enough frozen water to raise the oceans by 190 feet or 58 meters. As for Greenland, the complete melting of its ice sheets can increase the sea level by 23 feet or 7 meters, enough to submerge many coastal areas. So Kevin Costner was right all along. Waterworld was a terrible action flick because it was actually meant to be watched as a documentary or a survival guide if you may. Get it on DVD and survive the future. Nah, I'm only kidding. Seriously, don't watch the movie. It's not terrible, but bad enough that it's a waste of time. The next story is about a technology which I believe brings us a step closer to merging with machines. So Michael McAlphine, an engineer at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, has created a new 3D printer that draws precise patterns of electrically conducted material directly on a person's skin, like a tattoo on the outside. At current development, it can light up an LED bulb by holding a wireless power transmitter over the printed circuit. It's temporary in that it can stay on a person's skin for about 2 hours. Removal is easily done by the use of tweezers or washing them off with water. Over the years, I've heard many scientists and futurists say that the only way we'll be able to keep up with artificial intelligence or androids with AI would be for us to merge with machines. For example, as technology evolves, some people may choose to install mechanical limbs. I don't think this will only be for those who've lost their limbs in accidents. I truly believe some people will choose this route to help them in their profession, for example. It'll happen much further down the line, but when the technology is ready and if there's almost no chance of complications in the procedure, also allowing you to use your arms and legs no different from the ones you were born with while making it possible for you to do much more rigorous activities, then some people will go for it. 
as procedures like that become the norm, we'll start to discuss implanting our brains into androids. After that, I'm sure mapping our brains and consciousness to be safely stored on the cloud would be discussed as well. Then of course, we may choose to have our digital avatar to live a full life in a virtual world. It'll be like having two of you being productive. Let's say that you are a medical researcher and you've been tasked to explain a certain medical condition. Right now, it's just you going through the trial and error, one sample at a time. But what if you can have 10 of you doing the same research? What about 100? Imagine how productive you would be if you could spread the workload among the 100 avatar you and the you in the real world. But then, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've deviated from the article a little too far. Although this is a really interesting discussion about consciousness and identity, I think I'm going to make a uh, standalone video about it. Let me know in the comment section if you'd be interested in it. The next news is more tragic than anything. As it so happens, when a person dies in Indonesia, it looks as though they keep the coffin with the body inside on a traditional stilt house until proper funeral. Well, those stilt houses are not easy to climb on and it's even more difficult to bring down something from it, especially something heavy. On June 15, the son of a deceased woman was one of the many pallbearers who were tasked to bring down the coffin from the stilt house. Tragically, the ladder broke, the carriers lost control of the coffin, and the son was one of the several people to get struck by it. He died on the way to the hospital from a severe head injury. I guess it was just one of those uh, freak accidents, but the circumstances is really sad. For the guy in the next story, I, I don't have a word for him. Mr. Stephen Koch or Koch has actually, and I'm not kidding, intentionally contracted HIV virus so he could infect others. In fact, the judge asked him if that was the reason and he answered yes. Mr. Koch or Koch has pleaded guilty to seven additional charges, which I can't mention on this video because I know it'll get flagged. The good news is that he was sentenced to 50 years in prison and he'd been ordered to register as a sex offender. Here's another story from Indonesia and it doesn't need a lot of explaining. A 54-year-old woman went missing after leaving her house to tend to her garden. The family and villagers went out to search for her but they only found her belongings in the garden. Not long after the search had commenced, a 23 feet long python was found with a bloated belly some 50 yards away from the garden. When they cut open the snake's belly, the woman was found inside, still wearing her clothes, but obviously she was diseased from likely uh, suffocation. Death in such manner has got to be one of the worst ways to be taken out of this world. But enough with dying and let's talk about this badass grandma. Dee Dee Phillips was in her driveway when she saw a bobcat nearby. She took out her cell phone and took a couple of snapshots when out of nowhere the bobcat ran straight for her. It all happened too fast and before she knew it, the bobcat was already on top of her as she lay on the ground. The creature was chomping on her face, arms and hands but this badass grandma was not about to go down without a fight. She put her hands around the neck of the bobcat but of course, it continued to bite her everywhere it could reach. Now, here's the most badass detail of the whole incident. This grandma refused to scream because her granddaughter was sleeping inside and she feared that if she made any sound of distress, the little girl might come out. So she kept silent and she struggled to get better grips of the animal, then she strangled it to death. How badass is that? By the way, I'm in no way celebrating the killing of an animal, but as Diddy Phillips points out, the animal would have killed her if she didn't subdue it as she did. Also, it was rabid, it had to be taken out regardless. In any event, she had to fork up $10,000 on rabies shot and that's only for the first round of shots. She's got a crowdfund type of an account set up to help her pay the bills. I leave the link in the description in case you are interested in donating some money for Mrs. Phillips's medical expenses. Okay, next news is about a large hadron collider getting an upgrade. Now, I bring this up because I'm not all too familiar with this project aside its uh, main mission, the location of it, and just the basic information. I do, however, see many articles and videos about the supposed otherworldly stuff that happens in the complex. Uh, I don't want to discuss anything too far out there. 
if there's no evidence, then I don't feel comfortable discussing about it. However, there's the strange cloud formations over the complex where the Large Hadron Collider is situated. Those we've got pictures and although they could have been doctored or maybe there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for them, but you gotta admit, they look spectacular and ominous at the same time. So going back to the article, they say that the LHC is getting an upgrade to carry out the collisions at even faster rate. Could this really be the beginning of the end of times as some like to call it? Are the clouds telling us something like the portals from different dimensions trying to open on our end? <laughs> Who really knows? But it's fun to speculate. I'm just having fun, guys. In all honesty, I really don't think anything's gonna happen. I mean, I'm not saying there couldn't be accidents, but as far as the devil coming through the portal or the LHC bringing the end of the world, I don't see it happening. Okay, let's check out the next... <laughs> <laughs> uh, man screams at neighbors because his testicles hurt. I'm sorry. Yeah, so what happened was, the police received a call that a man was threatening to kill his neighbors while brandishing a gun. As it so happens, the man was on drugs, illegal substance. He went around the neighborhood knocking on doors and screaming <laughs> to people that his testicles hurt and <laughs> he was going to kill them. Uh, the man was arrested he, and he apparently gave the excuse that he was trying to use the neighbor's phones, uh, but they wouldn't let him. Thankfully, no one got hurt by the gun that was carrying or his testicles, and they all lived happily ever after. Well, for the exception of the testicle man, I'm sure he'll ride in jail for some time. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, let's just move on to another story. And for our last news, we've got something nature-related. According to a research conducted by scientists in Argentina, Mexico, and Peru, one species of leaf-cutting ants can literally sense rain and act accordingly as the weather changes. So basically, these ants can sense the increase in humidity and haul ass when they sense impending rain. Scientists have poured water in plants beside the trail the ants travel to simulate rain and what they found was that the ants scrambled to their nest up to 30% faster than normal. In the cases where the ants were carrying a cargo like a leaf and it happened to get wet, these ants were smart enough to drop their harvest and rush to their nest. This is because a wet leaf fragment is about twice as heavy as the dry one. Wow, it's the magic of evolution. I don't know about you guys, but I'm truly impressed. But that's all the news I've got for you for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.